Hey, good day everyone. I hope everyone is having a great day today, Sunday. My name is David and um, I want to start this topic. I want to look into this topic according to the Bible about the last days. And I want to do so in the name of Yahusha, who is many known as Jesus. Um, Chu is, he's the son of Yahweh, which people call God. So I'm going to do it and all, with all praises, thanks, guidance, in Yahweh name, God name, to his son, Jesus, which is, your name is, real name is Yahweh Shai. And thanks for this opportunity to try to dive into this topic in the last days, uh, based on the Bible. Well, we know today there's many confusion on this topic the last days. There's many teachings many misrepresentation of the Bible, many false teachings, false doctrine, etc. And in this last days, especially we as a people, of the, the Mosai people, the Israelites, that is the true Israelites, so-called blacks, Latinos, and natives of all countries, Native America, natives in the West Indies, Guyana, etc. Um, We've been bombarded with a number of teachings, a number of ideologies, and we need to really look into the facts based on Bible, history, and archaeology to get to find the truth on this matter so we could set our right place in the eyes of the Most High and the right place in society. Today, we know there's many, many confusion, many destruction and art, there's fires art-wide, there's floods, there's bad foods, there's fake news, fake foods, fake doctrines, fake people, there's so-called conspiracies, which many of the conspiracies is actually true. But we're not going to dive into all the conspiracies, we're going to try to stick to facts. And one of the facts is the Bible. The Bible is a historic book. It records history through different periods of time, over centuries and over thousands of years. Through people's lives in the era, they recorded what they saw. Prophets, righteous men of God, followers, and also rebels. Wicked people, you know, had the instinct in the Bible that they have been right that people talked about them and recorded so the bible is one of the main history book that many people overlook they tend to look at the history that other people write scholars etc and try to put that above the bible but think about it these men in those days the prophets people like elijah people like jeremiah they were scholars in in a hundred percent degree better than any scholar today because they were guided and protected and by the most High, the creator of the all things, of all mankind. They were given wisdom by that creator. So they were the best and the, 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 more, the most reliable uh, scholars to look at for truths, etc. So we're going to use this opportunity of looking to these scholars, these biblical scholars that wrote the Bible. People like Ezekiel, Psalms, King David, Elijah, Jeremiah, even Jesus' words. Jesus was the best scholar ever, greatest scholar. His words is in the Bible, in the New Testament, when he lived on earth. His disciples, the 12 disciples, they are scholars, right? They were te taught by Jesus Christ, right? So, I mean, they, they were the, their, their teacher was the best and greatest teacher ever. So, these men is the men that we have to look for because they will have the truth, right? The 12 disciples had Peter, Matthew, Mark, John, right? They wrote the Revelation. John wrote the Revelation. John the Revelator, right? He had visions from the Creator, visions from Christ, right? These disciples had miraculous powers, some of them, raised the dead, etc. So we're going to look at these men for truths and facts instead of looking the outside wicked men sources so called right so on the screen here i got the last days and 
even though there are many movies made on this topic and many fabrication, fictional movies and books, the last days is a real thing that's been recorded by these prophets in the Bible, right through the Bible. And the last days simply means a period of time where mankind's societies will keep breaking down, where, where there were predictions of floods, earthquakes, even by Jesus, and wars and rumors of wars, all these things is happening today. So we just sort through all, all these things, all these happenings, we need to sort through it and stand on solid ground within the midst of confusion, within the midst of destruction, right? With the help and faith and given to us by the Creator through His Son, Yahweh Shah, Jesus. So it's imperative and important that we stick to these instructions from the Bible along with looking at history, like outside history, archaeology, and so forth. So we're going to start off, I want to start off by saying all of that, just to say we're going to look at some Bible scriptures on the last days. And we're going to try to see, and we try to use these scriptures and see, where we stand and how it could help us build our feet in these wicked last days. Thank you again for watching this video and hope you find it informative and productive and beneficial. All right, so here we go. We're going to start with the, I'm going to use the 1611 King James Version Bible online with Apocrypha. And the Apocrypha was like a number of books, I believe it was I can't remember the number right now, but it got to be more than eight books or whatever, five books that were taken out by the Protestant church, right? It's a period between the Old and New Testament where the Greek captivity, when the Greeks have the Israel, had their Israelites in slavery, they recorded many things. So it was taken out by the wicked men and it was placed back. A matter of fact, it was in, I was in the Bible, it was taken out after 1611. So 1611, King James authorized the Bible to translate it into English. The Apocrypha was in there. So if you look at the King James 611 Bible, you're going to see the Apocrypha is in there. And that was written before they took it out in the other Bibles. Right? So I'm going to use that online. Let me see. Okay. So I'm going to use this online 1611 King James Version to start off, right? And um, let's see. So we're going to look at the topic of the last days. And I'm going to start off with 2 Ezra chapter 1. That's in the Apocrypha. That's a couple of books I talked about before Genesis, before, sorry, for an Old and New Testament. The gap that's missing. So these are some of the books. Ezra, 2 Ezra 1 chapter 1. Are we going to just read through some of these verses to get a sense and the essence of what Ezra, who was a prophet, a scholar, right? We're looking at scholars, remember? And we're going to see what he's saying concerning the last days. Now, Sarab said, this is the second book of the prophet Ezra, the son of Siraz, the son of Azraz, the son of Helchias, the son of Samadias, the son of Sadak, and the son of Akitok. These are Hebrew names, right? Because these people are Hebrew. The Israelites, the true language, where he is Hebrew, right? So we're going to skip this the introduction of Ezra. We got a basic understanding who he was, who he came from. He's a prophet. He's the son of these individuals here and so forth, right? And we're going to go down. And this is Ezra himself speaking here. And he said the word of Yahweh or the Lord, right? And the word of God is actually Christ, which is Yahweh Shai. So God gave the word to his son Yahweh Shai. And, and he's speaking Yahweh Shai, which is Christ, Jesus. We call so called Jesus, which is not his real name. Because J wasn't invented till after the 1600, I believe, something like that, or in the 1600. So the letter J, it can be Jesus. So his real name in Hebrew. Yahweh Shai. So I try to get the, the sense and the use of using a name. And behind me you see a description of a different topic of 
what Christ looked like when he walked the earth and what he's looking like today. He said he had um, what, he had white as snow and his skin was bronze of his born in a furnace. That's in Revelation 1.14. Uh, we could glance at that quickly just so, because people might be wondering what is this image behind me here. Uh, this is just a depiction, so I'm going to just quickly go to uh, the Bible and open another King James Version. And we're going to look at another. Um, Sorry, we're gonna da, 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 da. we're gonna look at um, the, that depiction. See where I get that from. But that painting um, is in Revelation. We're gonna look at Revelation one and verse fourteen, right? And this depiction of Jesus Christ here, or we call Jesus Christ, who really is Yahweh Shai. He says his head and his hair were white like wool. So it given the color white and his woolly hair. So it's like a so-called black person here, you know, woolly hair. Not the picture where they give us of this guy. If you punch in Jesus Christ, E S Christ, you're gonna see a white a white image, a white person. Right? Which is totally unfair now. You see? Now look at look look what they got as Jesus Christ. Right? You see, I'm gonna try to look. Let's find uh let's see this one here. Right? You see the difference between this fellow and this fellow in the screen? So who is right? They create an image, a fake image. This is all fake image. Christ was a very dark person, as this scripture states. His hair is white as wool, white as snow, his hair, and his eyes were as flame of fire, and his feet, his feet, like fine brass. Now, does this look like brass? Right? Does this person's feet here look like brass? Right? Let's see. Does this look like brass color? It's more look like red compared to this. And let's see how dark he was. As if he was born in a furnace. So does this look like he was born in a furnace or more like this? Right? So the true depiction of Christ, according to the Bible, according to this verse, is this, right? Not this, not this. Who's this guy? This some some fool they would make a picture over there, right? right? Who's this guys? Right? Who's this? If you're gonna make a depiction or take a picture, who's this guy? Where well, you're gonna get to find that this was a real person, a real guy named uh Caesar Borgia, whose father was the number six pope in Rome, and he was a homosexual, he was a pedophile, he had sex with his sister. And um, his mother, his grandmother actually killed him, decapitated him. The guy was so evil. And when he died, his, his father told Lino, Leonardo, D'Antri, they are whatever, they are a painter, to paint an image of him and say that he was God, say that he was Christ, so God, right? And then spread the image out of the earth. This, this is even recorded in the Bible, but I'm not going to get into that today. But we see clearly. This is not the depiction of the real Christ when he walked the earth and even as yesterday. God, when he made this statement here, he was in heaven. When Christ, when, G, when the, the guy that write this in John the Revelator saw Christ, he was in heaven. And in heaven he was still dark as he born in furnace, right? So we just want to get it out of the way. Some people might be wondering what this image I got behind the screen here. It's just a representation of Christ, whose true name is Yahweh Shai. So we can get back to the topic. So this is Ezra speaking here. As I say, the word of Yahweh, God name, right, which came to Christ, which is Christ, sorry, 
which the word of God is actually son Christ. So it is the word of Christ, the Lord, speaking unto Ezra, saying, Go thy way and shew my people. Now, God and Christ's people are the Israelites, right? God, Ezra was an Israelite. And God nation was is Israel, and it says, Show my people Israel. And people many people think that these words are speaking to the old or at all nation. No. It's a different topic to show that God always speaking to his nation. Chosen, he chose to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the twelve tribe of Israel, and Moses, the our Israelites. All these people are Israelites for one nation. So God is saying through Jesus, go and show my people their sinful deeds. Now the Israelites have become very wicked and they are following the other nations in adultery, in idolatry, sexual perversion, um, even sacrificing kids, um, eating people and all this. They were doing all these evil things that the other nation does and they were following it. So God is, was upset, rightfully so. And he said, go and show my people their sinful deeds. So God is telling Ezra to go and show his people Israel the their sinful deeds. And today the same thing. Right? God people that descended from those people is the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are very sinful today. They're in all type of madness. Right? They fall in the other nation in homosexuality, perversion, murder, gangs, um, drugs, marijuana, all these evil deeds. Nobody cares no more. Nobody's not looking to the laws of the Mosai no more. Especially the Israelites. Um, and forget about the other nations. They're doing their own madness. Right? So we always fall in these nations. They got holiday. We celebrate holiday. Feast days, Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving. All these madness have nothing to do with the Israelites. So God is upset over all of that. All that is considered sinful deeds. Right? And the children... Even the children, the wickedness. Look at the children today. They don't give a them, Right? Which they have done against me. So when you're doing all this, when one is doing all these evil things, they're doing it against the Mosai. That they may tell their children, children. So basically, tell these people to, to relate to the children, 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 the generation up to today. So this is fitting for us today. We are the children children right of these israelites back then right now because of the sins of their fathers are increased in them for they have forgotten me and have offered strange offered unto strange gods so they were doing all these things offering unto idols sacrificing the kids to these strange gods etc now i am this is god speaking continue to speak he said i am i I'm not I even he that brought them out to the land of Egypt. Tell her how he brought them out from the Egyptians. It's 400 years of slavery to with Moses out the land of Egypt. And yet they are rebelling against him. He's upset. Rightfully so. From the house of bondage, right? I've said, and, and, but now they have provoked me with wrath. This guy's very upset. Even today. Very, very upset. And despise my counsels. As nations of Israel, we suppose we had laws to follow and we abandoned all of it. Some of the laws are the male Israelite men not supposed to shave their beards clean and ball their head clean. We are, a lot of you are doing it. Michael Jordan, all these people balling the head, you know. An Israelite man supposed to have a beard like, like Christ had, a God. So God, even God have a beard, right? You understand? Mm -hmm. So and then also eating bad foods, pork, etc., and all the other wickedness, adultery, homosexuality, etc. These are against the counsels of the Most High. Pulls out, pulls out of them the hair of thy head. Pull also, pulls out of them the hair of thy head and cast all evil upon them. For they have not been obedient unto my law. There it is. God clearly saying to Christ, the Israelites have not been obedient unto his law. Which some of them I just expand on. But it's a rebellious people. You see? The Israelites are a rebellious people. 
right? In all country, they scattered all country. They got Israelites in Guyana, which is where, which is originally where I'm from. I lived in Guyana for 29 years, right? And you see all this matter of madness over there, right? Even today, nobody cares. And in, they're in Jamaica, Trinidad, the Israelites in America, in England, everywhere they go, there is a rebellious people. You tell somebody about God, they want to beat you some places and kill you. How long shall I forbear them? God is very upset. God says, how long will I stand up with this madness? Right? Who have done so much good? Who have, who have done so much good? I said, who have done so much good? No, no, sorry. How long shall I forbear them, them unto who I have done so much good? God has done so much good. For the Israelites, literally at one time Israelites had a nation and all other nations trying to wipe them out the face of the earth, right? The King David had wars, King David himself as a king had to go to war. He himself had to kill thousands of people himself to stop the Israelites from getting wiped off. All through history, right? God was protecting them in wars and different things like that. He did so much, but, but today God just back off. Because they are rebel. At the time when he was protecting them, they were following the laws through King David, King Solomon, etc. But when they became wicked, God can deal with wickedness. So he allowed them to go into captivity, into slavery, lose wars, destroy the temple, destroy the homeland, chase them out of Israel, and scatter them earthwide today. Right? So that's what's going on here. He said these people are rebellious people. How long shall I forbear them? Right? Then who, unto whom I've done so much good. So imagine you have some kids and they, you did good for them. You, you spend all your money, you do everything possible to help them in all endeavors. And guess what? They all rebel against you. How would you feel? Very, very upset. And I don't like to use this word, but the real word is pissed off. Right? And that's what God is saying here. Right? Many kings have I destroyed for their sakes. You see that? God destroyed the king, uh, Pharaoh, the Egyptian Pharaoh, and his army in the sea. Killed all them in the sea. So the Israelites could escape to the Red Sea. Remember the flood, Ten Commandments thing? He said Pharaoh. See you see that? He said Pharaoh. He destroyed Pharaoh and his servants, his armies, and all his power have I smitten down. God did all this for his beloved people of Israel. He said, many kings have destroyed them for. And all the nations have I destroyed before them. See that? Now this dispute everything that people are saying that God is dealing with all nations and everybody can be saved. You know, once you do good and all nations can be saved. No. God is upset even today with these other nations too. And none of them is not, falling, is not living by the most high ways. They have their own ways. They follow Buddha. They follow Muslim. They follow um, Hindu. They follow um, Muhammad, all type of madness, right? And God is upset with them too. So, but particularly in this topic, he's talking about the, the Israelites, but all other nations, so he's upset with. They have this, he, he had to fight for, for the Israelites. They have no, you know what I mean? He had to use miraculous powers many times to fight this nation because they were more powerful than the Israelites' nation, more man, more armies, more well equipped. So God had to intercede in many occasions. And he's going to intercede in the end, different topic. But the point is, God is saying here how he's upset because he did so much for these people. He even destroyed the nation before them. And in the east, I have scattered the people of two princesses, even Tyrus and Sidon, which is two African nations. God, very powerful African nations, God had to fight and just send them away, fleeing from the Israelites. And I've slain all the enemies. God killed a lot of people for the Israelites, a lot of enemies. Right? Right through history. Right? Now speaks out there for now. Ezra we getting back to the top. I just a sidetrack. But Ezra is now get a breakdown. Before God break down the last days, he's telling Ezra about his people, how they had rebelled against him, how he's upset. But he's telling them to come back to him so in the last day he could rescue them. Right? That's what this whole chapter is about. Then he says, therefore, speak thou therefore unto them, the Israelites, thus say the Lord, 
just say Yahweh God through Christ Jesus, which is Yahweh Shai. I led you through the sea, and in the beginning give you a large and safe passage. This with Moses through the sea, split the Red Sea. Let's look at the image of the Red Sea splitting what God did. Red Sea split for the Israelites. Let's look at that. Let's see what happened. So the depiction, you know, is a depiction. Now this one depiction, the Israelites got divided the Red Sea, make them walk through dry land, right? These just drawings, you know what I'm saying? But it actually happened. Right? That's what God's saying here. Okay? That's what God's saying here. I've, I've led you through the sea in the beginning and give you a large safe passage. That's what's happening here. I've led you through the sea. This is the Israelites, the ancient Israelites. Right? Who descendants today are the so-called blacks. Natives, Latinos, or white, descended from these people right here, right? It's just a drawing, you know what? You know what I'm saying? We're real people that walk through this here. But God is stating it there in His um, to Jesus um, to the uh, Ezra in this chapter here, right? I give you Moses, who was the Israelite from the tribe of Levi, which is today are the Haitians, for a leader. And Aaron, if this is Moses' brother, for a priest. I've given you light in a pillar of fire, and great wonders have I done among you, yet you have forgotten me. Now, this went after they came out of here. They had to live in the, in the wilderness for 40 years. And God gave them light and food and different wonders. And they use it. So called, what people call UFOs were heavenly spacecraft, chariots. God used to help light up the night. God, there's no light in the desert. He used, you know, I mean, we could, we could see a depiction of that. Um, the light. is a fire in the wilderness. Right? Uh, this is not about writing the wrong thing with Moses. The fire that led them. These are just some drawings, but it's not really accurate. I like to put white people in white so called, you know, there are black people, right? But it's just some drawing. Um, blah, blah, blah. This is not what I'm looking for. The, the light that led them. Something like this. Right? You know, there's when you, the fire born of the fear armies. And mind you, the fear armies here, this fire was coming down from a spacecraft. You know, the spacecraft, let me show you something. Space, these so called UFOs are real, but the, the elite, the wicked people today are fake ones too, but they are, God has heavenly spacecraft. Let's show you something. God's heavenly spacecraft. Which is called UFO. UFOs. Right? Now, you see, they got people, got people, different drawings, right? But let's say it would look something like this. Because out of scripture, describe it wheel within a wheel, right? Wheel within a wheel, described in the other prophets. Thing was Ezekiel wheel within the wheel. Um, these people call it different things. They call it um, clouds. They call it different, different thing names. Wheel within a wheel, whirlwind. But it was all these people. These these people about used to see these things, right? This is how they describe. Used to describe it. Ezekiel um, described it something like this. Right? That's what he saw in Ezekiel. Right? That's why you describe it like this. Right? Nobody know exactly what this thing look. It's just people create this the, um, depiction about these things. But a real spacecraft. 
right? The real spacecraft probably looking similar to this. And the point we're trying to get at, in the middle here is something like this. This is where the fire comes down in this painting here. This is where the fire comes down and destroy the, the Pharaoh army while the Israelites look on and get rescued when it came out the, uh, the Red Sea. The Red Sea dry up. Fire was destroying them along with when they go in the water they get destroyed too. But God used these spacecraft for many things for light up them in the desert, etc. We're not get into that a different topic. But I just want to give you an idea, right? You get back to the topic. So there was a pillar of fire here, talking about here, this. This was the pillar of fire. He was leading them in. Nighttime, light up the light and so on. It's just a, just a regular fire. It's a pillar of fire coming from something like this. From like this. Flying above ahead and the pillar of fire coming down like this. Right? Hope everybody got that understanding. So that's the pillar of fire that God was leading them. Give them light in a pillar of fire or a a so-called spacecraft coming down above from above, giving them light. And great wonders, giving them food from above. From these same spacecraft is firing food too, like it's got it manna and so on. For 40 years they were, they were living there, right? I have done among you, yet you have forgotten me. So God said, all that he did for them, initially turned it back. So I worship in other gods. Say to Yahweh. Just say, Almighty Lord, Yahweh. The quarries were as a token for you. I've given you tents for your safeguard. Nevertheless, you murmured there. And triumph not in my name for destruction of your enemies. But ever to this day do you murmur. So that was complaining, murmuring, etc. Now we can try to get down to the point. You see, you even go and say, give them money to eat. These spacecraft is delivering manner food from above, from the same, the same, uh, sorry, food is coming down like this, supplying the Israelites in the earth for 40 years so they could eat food. Because the desert, there was in a desert, there's no food in the desert. You understand? So you get it? So God is telling you what he did. He gave them food, angels' bread from above. Because his angels operating these spacecraft. Angels. Even Jesus have his own spacecraft, a different topic, different subject, different scripture. Right? Angels food. Even the angels in this spacecraft, they eat a special food. They don't eat chicken and all that that we eat. They got special food in this thing and in heavenly realm where they dwell. Right? But they was giving them angel food according to the, the Bible, right? And when you were thirsty, I, I cleaved a rock. He let Moses break a rock and water came out. There was no water in the desert. The rock was, water was coming out of rocks. I'm giving them water. Water flew out of out your field. They were drinking. They were never thirsty in the desert. If you know we're in a desert, you can't even live more than two days or whatever without water. You're dead. But these people live for 40 years in a desert. God was supplying them with water. For the heat, for, for the heat, I, co I co covered you with the leaves of the tree. And this tree is different. It's not a literal tree. It's done with wisdom and understanding. I divided it. Did among you a fruitful land and cast out the filities. They tell me to bring them into Israel and so on here. So we're trying to get down to the last day point. We're going to try to get down to the last day. And we can look at two Ezra. We just give a I just want to give a heading what I'm getting at. That in the, the nation of Israel is God's true nation. It's the nation that he's chosen. But they rebel against him in the past. Right? At one time in history, they were following his laws and he fight with them in wars as it's stated in the scripture there. But I'm going to show in the last days what's really going to happen. That he's going to protect them. They're going to have to come back to his laws, obviously. A chosen elect of the Israelites, not all going to come back. I said one tour, different topic. One tour of these people, descendants, going to turn back to the laws and be rescued through the destruction in the last days. So Ezra is breaking out Ezra this year, and then he's going to show Ezra what's going to happen in the last days. He said, ah, even though the people do all this, if they turn back to him, 
is going to rescue them in the last day. So that we're going to see that in 2 Ezra 8. 2 Ezra chapter 8. We're going to look at chapter 8. 2 Ezra chapter 8. And we're going to start with verse 1. Now we can see this is Ezra again. He come back to Ezra on a different occasion, give him different to tell me more things. And he said, and he answered me, saying, Most the most high had made this world for many. This world that we live in here right now is for many. Right? It's for many. Many people doing a bunch of madness on this world right now. Wars, homosexual, doing the one thing, right? But you see the world to come is for few. Many people going to be destroyed that's living in this world, right? Many. But only a few will, will gain the new world, right? Remember the, the broad, there's this another scripture say, broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the part and the gate that leads to everlasting life. That's what he's talking about right there. Now he tells you, see, a similar truth. He's telling Ezra things in similar truth here. As when thou ask the word, it shall say unto thee that it give it much mold wherein earth vessels are made but little does that go over the comet even so because of this present world so what he's saying here right it's a similitude as when you ask the earth if you ask the earth meaning wicked mankind basically the or when time with art and I'm a literal art is a similar truth, right? They say here. This art is wicked mankind. It's mankind. People on art. It if you ask people on art, they will say unto the that it give it much mole. That is art is giving much mole. What mole means? Evil, wickedness, corruption, violence, war, homosexuality, hatred, madness. That's what it mole here. That's the mole. If you ask people in the order, you say, hey, it give it much mold. Where of orton vessels are made, right? The things in the order, the orton vessels, all the madness, the planes, the cars, all this orton vessel. It give it mold. After a while, it give, give literal mold after a while. We got a house after a while. It literally create molds and rotten away. It don't last forever. Cars create rust, which is mold too, in a sense. So it's a literal and spiritual symbol through there too, body, right? But little dust that gold that do gold come out of it right so it's saying there's a lot of mold but you know the little dust come from you might see no dust coming out but it's more, it we're talking about there right the earth is corrupt with evil and um which is a mold but you don't see no real dust coming from it right so you're like well the earth is good everything is good because there's no dust so it's kind of fooling you right this is what the time about it even so is because of this present world. The time of this present world we're living in is wicked, it's corrupt, it's moldy, right? It's rusted, but you don't see dust flaking off it, but it's a trick, right? Now, there be, they, they, they be many created, but few shall be saved. So in the last days, few shall be saved. So answer and said, shallow them down, O my soul understanding and devoid wisdom for thou has agreed to give ear and art willing to prophesy for thou has no longer space than only to lie right O lord if thou suffer not just thy servant that we may pray before thee right this is like old english storms here you know man and thou give us seed unto our heart and culture unto our understanding that they may come fruit of it how shall each man live that is corrupt, who bear the place of a man? For thou art alone, and we are all workmanship of thine hands, like hast thou hast said. But when the body is fashioned, now in the mother's womb, and thou givest it members, thy creature is persuaded in fire and water, and nine, mo nine months do the workmanship endure thy creature which is created in her. Now this is Ezra's He's breaking out to Ezra, right? How the create how people is created on earth. When the body is fashioned out in the mother's womb, and they'll give it his members, it's all happening in the mother's belly, stomach, in the womb, right? The creature, the creature is persu persu persuaded, 
preserved in fire and water in nine months. So the, the, the baby in the mother womb is preserved in fire, meaning in, in the nutrients and so on, and in the water, the baby, mother is lives actually in water for nine months, right? So we're going to go down to, so he break down how the human condition, right? And then he can tell you about the last days now. He can tell you how, what's going on. And verse 4, we go to verse 4 to 9. For thou hast, he said, he said in, in thou hast humbled thyself as it becomes thee. So God is talking to Ezra that, you know, see that you humble yourself. I'm going to tell you what's going to go on in the last days. And has not judged thyself worth too much glory among the righteous. For many great miser miseries shall be done to them, meaning the wicked, that in the latter time, which is the last days, shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. What do we come to mind? The great pride, pride month, a man of madness, right? Pride Month, that gay pride parade, all that. It's talking about that along with all evil and wickedness on the earth today. Adultery, murder, wars. It's talking about these great miseries. Mis miseries is happening on the earth today to, 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 to the wicked. In the last days, the those are dwelling on earth. Now, he said, because they have walked in great pride. But understand it thou for thyself. God is telling Ezra, understand for thyself. And it could be talking to us too. Understand for ourselves. And seek out the glory, right? Especially in these last days. For such has be like thee. So he's telling Ezra, you best go and seek out people that just like you. That's striving to follow the laws. So we have to do the same thing today. Seek out like-minded people. Just like you who are willing to follow the laws and live by the laws of the Most High in these days. That's the only way you could escape the destruction coming. She's giving them a kind of a warning. You better try to go through. Because on a deeper level, Ezra is alive today. The same guy. All his prophecies regenerates. Right? Everybody regenerate. You come back his same father bloodline as a baby in something I can't tell you Bible is every four generations someone come back. So this same guy is alive today and God's telling him how to survive in this same time lazy. You know when you come back, regenerate, you don't remember yourself. You don't remember who you were in your past life. It's a different topic, but he's trying to give him a hint here about the last days you're gonna find yourself living in. Ezra's alive somewhere today, but nobody he don't even know who he is, right? Nobody knows who they are in a previous life. Get me? So, but on the for thyself and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. Right? Now, Ezra or whoever he is in today, God's going to reveal to him, hey, remember? He might be probably going to read the same scripture and they're going to hit him, yeah. That's, you know, but he's not going to say that's me, but you get my point. We, as a whole, are supposed to be doing this. You can seek out likewise ones. So Ezra today is, will, will be seeking out likewise ones. He's going to be around right now today. Whoever he is, he can be around likewise people that fall in the laws. Right? He's going to be the same spirit. Even though he died thousands of years ago, the same spirit regenerates. The spirit don't die. For unto you is paradise open. So unto you, meaning Ezra, paradise is open. He could gain eternal life. But it could apply for us too. It's open for us, but we have to follow these laws. For the tree of light is planted, the time to come is prepared. Right? Plenteousness is made ready, a city is built, and rest is allowed. Yeah, 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 you could say yeah. And the depiction for yeah, let's see what yeah means. It's kind of a joyous occasion, I would think. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah or nay. The semi will give the final yeah or nay. Oh, it's actually mean yay or yes, this definitely gonna happen. Yeah, yay, yeah, yeah. Comedy created the word yes, yes. It's going to be right from the word yes, so on, right? So, but it's actually saying, right? Yes, perfect goodness and wisdom. 
going to be happening in to the righteous to gain eternal in you know after the destruction God set everything back in order. But then he said the root of evil is sealed up from you, meaning Ezra, he's not gonna face evil. Weakness and the moat, the same moat in the previous chapter, that evil, corrupt madness is hidden from Ezra and likewise ones. Like if you today following these laws, this this moat of this corrupt society is gonna be hidden from you. You won't be able to get involved with it. You can just find God and guide you to sidetrack all the madness. That's what we're talking about. And corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. Now this word hell doesn't mean a literal hell born with fire. Hell just mean a place of torment, a condition, right? In a bad condition, a hellish condition, you're catching hell, you don't have no money, you're homeless, all this hell conditions. So this 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 is symbolically speaking here, that this mud, this evil is hidden from Ezra and it's likewise ones. And corruption is fled into hell. Corruption meaning is dealing with all the madness and the wicked individuals, right? Sorrows are past and the end is true and treasure of immortality. Right? Therefore, ask thee no more question concerning the multitude of them that perish. So God said, Listen, no ask so much question about these idiots that no perish, any of them. For therefore, ask thou no more question, right? For when they had taken liberty, when they had taken liberty, for, right? Meaning they had the freedom to choose what to do was right. But they, 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 their mind is all bogged out. They despise the Most High through scorn of the law. See the problem? Not following these laws cause all this madness. Most of our people scorn the law. You tell them don't eat pork because against the law in the Bible, they'll say you're mad. You tell them you're not supposed to shave your beard clean, they say you're mad, mad. They scorn at you, laugh at you. There's something wrong with you. Right? And they forsook his ways. So God said, don't worry these people. Don't worry these idiots. They take for the taking liberty. They, say they think they could do what they would please. Moreover, they have trodden down. They, moreover, they have trodden down his righteousness. They trod down the most of righteousness. And said they said in their heart that there is no God. So that's happening today, the last days. Remember this topic is about the last days. We we start off showing um in the Bible. Right, that the Israelites in the ancient times become was righteous. God let them help them through different occasions, let them out of slavery. To Moses, so on, had given them a kingdom. Right, he conquered a lot of enemies so they could get peace in the land. They were flourishing. That land, they had wealth, they had power, they had armies, they had food, livestock. Right, then they became wicked. God, they rebelled against God. He put them into slavery, so on, and then it come down to the last day where they're still in slavery, the, the Israelite descendants, and they're still wicked. We go through all of that. But then we see, we show showing how even in this wickedness, the true Israelites could turn to God and be protected, right? And don't have to follow the ways of the other wicked Israelites and other nations, right? Because these people said in heart, there's no God. Yes that they knowing they must die. So a lot of people like, hey, there's no God that can do it. People, guess what? They're knowing that they're going to die. Right? They can't stop that. Don't matter if you say there's no God, they're still going to die, right? And they said in the heart, they, you know, for, for as the things here for shall receive you, so thirst and pain are prepared for them. Things they hear of, so for the things a4 says shall receive you, meaning you as an individual trying to follow these laws of the Most High, he's going to prepare good things to you. But Taurus, right, a physical Taurus and spiritual Taurus, meaning they don't, meaning they don't have no wisdom, they are damned, ones that are weak, following wickedness, and pain are prepared for them, meaning total destruction, and will not gain eternal life in God's system is prepared for them. For it is not his will that men should come to naught, but they choose evil, right? You know what I mean? But they, they which he created have defiled the name of him that made them and were unthankful 
unto him to prepare life for them. Meaning the Israelites, he created them and he chose them as a nation. And they have defiled his name with all the madness that he talked about before. Of which he prepared life for, he prepared life for them. And therefore is my judgment now at hand. So God's judgment is now at hand in these last days. These things have I showed unto all men, but unto thee. Now we are saying, these things have I not shown unto all men, but he showed unto Ezra to tell his people. Remember, if you go back in four, chapter 1, it talks about God gave it to show to his people. Let's look back quickly. Chapter 1, Ezra 2. Chapter 1. Right. Uh, you see, the Lord came to me saying, Go thy way and show my people. There's the Israelites. Right? Ezra was the Israel and his people were the Israelites. Show him the sinful deeds. So this is, was exactly what this is saying. These things are shown to all men. Yeah, I'm sure not all men, but he's shown to Ezra to tell, show his people. Remember, I said before, and a few like these, the few righteous ones that fall in like the laws. Then answer I and said, Behold, O Yahweh, this is your Ezra speaking here. Now as thou show me the multitude of the, thy wonders, the wonders which will began to do in the last times. But at what time has thou not shown me? So Ezra said to God, listen, you told me all these wonders in the last time, but you will not, not show me when it's going to be. At what time? Right? And we're going to finish off with this part here because it's very important. Ezra wanted to know when is the last days. And God's going to give him a little understanding, but not fully because no one knows the day and the hour. But, uh, but he now, God, answered me and said, Measure thou the time digitally in itself. So in order to find the last days you're in, measure the time. Now if you use common sense and measure the time we're in today, compared to thousands and hundreds of years ago, you could see the difference. Right? Or it wild, it's floods, or quakes, fires. Uh, this is prediction in Matthew 24, I believe. Let's look at Matthew 20, 24. Uh, see, there's some of these signs. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24. I believe it's in, I believe. Uh, Matthew 24. Oh yes, okay. Jesus answered said unto them, Take it that no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name, saying I'm a Christ. We see that happening. Right? You see many. Thou shall have a wars. We see that happening. Ukraine war. World War One, World War Two. All this period here. From World War One, World War Two, all these times. Is the last days. That he said to measure the time. This is how we measure the time. Compare these prophecies. Room of the wars. Right, China said they're going to destroy Iran, um, Taiwan, so on. There's a rumor, we don't know if it's true. See what you not be troubled. This is nation rise up against nation, they're happening. Kingdom is against nation, kingdom happening. Famines is happening, pestilence. Wink, wink. Right, the, the vid, the job, wink, wink. Spark of Palestine, Palestine, disease, cancer, blah, 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 blah. All these diseases. We have earthquakes, diverse places. These are the beginnings of sorrows, right? So we get an understanding about what he's saying here. Measure the time. And when those seeds part of the signs, remember, these are signs, right? You say, um, what, what will, and Jesus, Jesus said to them, see you not trouble, very say to you, they shall be left safe, so blah, blah, blah. As he said unto the monk, what, what are the, shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So these are the signs, right? Measure yourself, measure the time today. And when thou see part of the signs part, which I have told thee before, thou shalt understand that it is a la, the very same time where the highest, the Most High Yahweh, will begin to visit the world which he had made. It's happening right now. Therefore, then, 
they shall be seen, you see, or quakes. He said the same thing that Jesus said in Matthew. Earthquakes, right? Pores of the people in the world. Thou shalt see, thou shall, uh, then shall thou will understand that the most I speak of these things with the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Now remember, Ezra is alive today and he's seeing these things. So he's remembering now. Once he starts seeing this thing, God is talking to him, he's going to come back to his mind wherever he is. For like as that, that is made in the world had a beginning and end, the end is manifest. Right? We're in the end period. Even as the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in the wonders and powerful works, ending in effects of signs. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by his faith. What's the works and the faith? The works is keeping of the laws, and the faith is believing in Christ, believing in sacrifice for his people, the nation of Israel, believing in all that he teach. That's the faith. Right? Following his footsteps is faith. Now, faith in the future prophecies, faith in God, that's faith. But the works is the way you live your life. If you live your life as a homosexual, that's, that's bad works. It's not the right works. If you live your life eating pork, that's not good. Right? His works mean actions. Wherever you have believed, Right? So once again, thank you. I hope this is enlightening. There's many more on this topic. I'm going to a part two. Right? There's many more to cover. But this video is can is not can be will be long enough to show you know to cover it. So everyone have a great day and hope this this video is beneficial and enlightening and informative. And thanks and bye.